Your Massachusetts real estate market update for August 29th, 2022. So in this video, as always, we're going to talk about single family and condo data that we saw in last week for properties that are on the market, under agreements, as well as solds. But we're also going to do a comparison of 2021 data for inventory versus 2022. Kind of some interesting trends there. Now, the Fed chairman, he spoke and boy, did the market listen. We saw rates skyrocket, so we have got to talk about that, as they're pretty darn close to 2022 highs. And another institutional buyer is actually getting out of the market, so what does this mean for us and other markets around the country? Hey, it's Jeff Chubb with the Chubb Homes team. Should you have any questions about your own specific real estate needs, then feel free to grab my information in the description below. Would love to chat with you. So let's jump over to the single family market, where we had 5,152 units on the market. Now, this is down 30 units from last week and the important thing to see here is that the, the bleed's slowing if you will right we were only down 30 units is where last week we were down over 100 so we're starting to see that week over week decrease in the amount of inventory coming on the market actually decrease in itself which is great news for buyers now we had 946 newly listed properties that came on the market this is 286 less homes than we saw at the same time same week last year which is a 23 percent decrease in the amount of inventory when you compare it to this year versus last year. Now, we had 1,042 homes that went under agreement this week, and this is 168 less units than we saw the same week last year, which is about a 14% decrease year over year. And the big takeaway here is that buyer demand, while it's reduced, it continues to outpace the uh, supply that the sellers are putting on the market. We had 949 homes that sold last week for an average sale price of $695,000 and a median sales price of 579000 in this months of inventory. Months of inventory is how we calculate what type of market we're in. Ultimately, zero to five months of inventory is a seller's market, but the closer to zero that we can be, the more aggressive of a seller's market it is. And boy, are we an aggressive seller's market, as there is currently 1.31 months worth of inventory on the market in the state of Massachusetts for single-family homes, and this is a small tick up from last week's 1.28 months. Now, in the condo market, we currently have 2,411 units on the market. This is down 65 units from last week, which is about to a 2.6% decline in the amount of inventory. There are 327 newly listed condos that came on the market, which is 102 less than the same week last year in 2021. And that's a nearly a 24% decrease in the amount of new inventory coming on the market year over year. Now we saw 353 condos go under agreement last week, which is a far cry from the 474 that we saw in the same week last year, right? That year over year um, comparison. This is a 26% decrease in the amount of properties going on on the market. Now, so let's put this all in perspective, right? We saw a 24% decrease in supply, but then we saw a 26% decrease in demand, right? And that's kind of an equal market, if you will, which is why we're not seeing inventory just drastically shoot up as the demand has decreased from the interest rate hikes that we've seen over the last couple months. There were 347 condos that sold last week for an average sale price of about $602,000 and a median sales price of $510,000. Now that months of inventory, again, uh, we're in a very strong seller's market for condos in the state of Massachusetts. We currently have 1.53 months worth of inventory on the market, and this is compared to 1.49 months that we saw last week. So just like in the single family market, we saw that little uptick in that months of inventory. And by the way, if you're liking this data and you're wanting to see the full month of August and how it kind of laid out, that's exactly what we're doing next week. We're going to take a look at, well, the week that's about to happen right now and then also do a recap of a comparison for August for 2022 versus 2021. And really getting a good idea at this point, what is the real estate market in 2022? What is it really going to encompass? Where is this market headed, right? We have eight months out of the 12 months in data. So we're really starting to get a really great picture. So make sure you hit that like and subscribe button if you're wanting to see that August data because that is going to be next week's video. So the mortgage market, like I said, the Fed chairman, Powell, he spoke and boy did the markets listen. So what did he say exactly? Well, he basically said that the current policy of increasing interest rates is going to continue to happen all the way until the at least end of 2023, which is a little bit different than what the market kind of thought. They thought at some point he was going to start calming down with these interest rate hikes and we were, might even start to see some monetary loosening 
spending as the economy started to slow. He also said that the 2023 federal funds rate is probably going to be somewhere in the 4% range. That is what they're targeting. So what does all this mean for you, right? And you and the real estate market and buying a house. Well, what this means is that the cheap money, it's gone. These higher interest rates, this is, I hate to use this quote, but this is the new normal, right? You know, we're not going to see these interest rates start to tumble again. Kind of get used to these higher interest rate environment. Cheap money, it is gone. Mortgage rates, they have jumped to nearly a two-month high. We're in that 6% range, which is ultimately speaking, uh, we're in that high range, if you will, for all of 2022. But some people, they're still getting 30-year fixed rate mortgages in the mid fives. It really all depends on your credit as well as which program that you're going in. And as a cautionary tale, we actually just had a buyer. They just actually went under agreement, but they had a quote from a lender in, in regards to a really, really, really attractive interest rate, right? Well, when we dug in a little bit more together, we actually found that that lender was charging 1.25 points, right? So a point is where you pay down the rate in order for them to show this nice, beautiful, attractive interest rate here. Well, those points were actually going to cost that buyer nearly $10,000 in additional closing costs. So that's a little cautionary tale. As we're seeing these interest rates go up, you do really need to be cognizant in regards to of your closing costs. Is that lender offering you such an attractive rate? Because, well, they're increasing your closing costs by adding points in order to buy down your rate, which might not necessarily be the best thing for you. So that's just, again, a little cautionary tale that you should be on the lookout for because rate, it's not not everything you also have to look at the closing costs. So when is the Fed going to stop increasing rates? This is the million dollar question, right? And ultimately the answer is when inflation subsides. And in order for the inflation to subside, well, the government, they need to stop spending money in order for this to happen, as you can see here from this article. So basically, like I said, these higher interest rates, this higher interest rate environment, it's the new normal. It's here to stay for, well, at least for what we can see for the next, according to the Fed pal chairman right now, right? At least until the end of 2023. Now, another institutional buyer, they're getting out of the market. This is some pretty big news because Blackstone's the largest private equity firm in the world, okay? And Blackstone Single Family Landlord, they're called Home Partners of America. They actually stopped buying in 38 cities, 38 markets throughout the U.S., why is that number so big? It's because they only operate in 80 markets throughout the U.S. So they essentially eliminated about half of the areas that they're currently buying in. And by the way, Blackstone, this Home Partners of America, they're not the first private equity company in order to stop buying in America. And here's what I promise you, they're not going to be the last. And this matters so much for you as well as other people in the country because this ultimately drastically affects the demand curve literally overnight. Now, look, here in Massachusetts, we didn't see a lot of institutional buying, so we are a lot more protected. But in markets like Charlotte, Phoenix, Atlanta, Georgia, they saw over 30% of all demand, all sales last year were to institutional buyers. So if these guys stop buying overnight like they are, that means there's a huge change in the demand curve, which is ultimately going to mean a skyrocketing amount of supply, which probably means uh, some price cuts in the future future. So are we going to see that here? Again, it comes down to we did not have institutional buyers here. And so what all this means is I can pretty much guarantee you're going to start seeing some really ugly, I should say more ugly headlines when they start talking about the real estate market. But that's the national real estate market. Just like we can't say that the average temperature in the U.S. yesterday was 77 degrees, right? It would just make zero sense and not be any way a helpful, you know, in metric of indication, right? It's the same thing with the real estate market. You need to continue to look at hyper local data and hyper local stats because those national headlines that you're going to read from these institutional buyers and what these institutional buyers stopping buying in like Boise, Idaho, Austin, Texas, I've named a bunch of them before. That is not necessarily what you are going to see today because again, we saw very little institutional buying in the state of Massachusetts in the last couple of years. But let's take a look at a little year over year comparison of these inventory levels in the state of Massachusetts because I really think that they tell an interesting tale. And what's really interesting is that the single family you know, data is a lot different than what you see in the condo data in Massachusetts when you look at the comparison for 2021 versus 2022. 
The single family inventory increased during the spring of both 2021 and 2022, as you can see here. And this is to be completely expected in the spring market. Generally speaking, we see more sellers that come to the market but we also see more buyers coming to the market now inventory levels they actually started lower in 2022 as you can see versus 2021 but then it spiked and actually would continue to grow and outpace what we saw in 2021 for pretty much all spring now the summer inventory levels actually really show a different story for for both years right inventory has decreased in 2022 and that's what we've really been talking about for the last month or so but it actually has pretty much stayed level for all of 2021. And here's what's interesting and something that's important to note is that inventory actually cratered in the fall market of 2021. And you can really see that here, right? Now the question becomes, are we going to see this in 2022? And I gotta tell you, if I'm playing with house money here and I'm making a bet, I'm probably gonna say it doesn't crater like we saw up there. I personally think we are gonna continue to see some inventory gains in the fall. Maybe it stays even, but I really am feeling that I, I just, I I just believe we're going to start to see that inventory level grow a little bit slightly. Nothing to be concerned about if you're a seller. I think the dynamics of the market still could look extremely attractive to you if you're a seller. Um, but I do personally believe, and my bet is that we're going to continue to see some inventory growth in the fall, which will be a different trend that we saw in 2021. So let's turn to the condo market where the inventory actually started off a lot lower in 2021 than it did in 2022. And what's really interesting here is in the spring, you didn't see any real huge increase in the amount of inventory that came on the market, right? But we did start to see the 2022 inventory levels catch up, not quite go over, but catch up to the 2021 levels. And we really saw that happen ultimately um, in June sometime where inventory levels caught up to where they were in 2021. But again, just like in the single family market, we, for the month of August, we actually saw our inventory start to decrease in the condo market, which is what we're seeing here in this chart. So it comes back to it, you know, are we gonna see these inventories increase? Again, it's the it's, it's best bet, right? Nobody really knows for sure. My bet is that I do believe that they will, but the big ticket item here, the big ticket piece of information for you here is that inventories remain very, very, very low in the state of Massachusetts. And in order for you to have a housing correction, quite frankly, you need high inventory levels, which we just do not have here. So are you wondering if there's going to be a real estate crash in 2023 in Massachusetts? It's a really great question. Then you need to be sure to hit that like and subscribe button because that's a video that I'm working on. I'm going to have it out soon. Where we're comparing the market in 2007 and 2008 to today and what we're seeing here. It's a lot of a data packed video that is going to be really great. If you have any questions about the market, any comments about the market or the video, things that I can do better, please drop a line in the description in the comments section below. I always answer everybody. I love seeing the comments. And if you want to talk real estate and your own personal needs, if you're thinking about buying or selling a house in the state of Massachusetts or really anywhere in the country, because I do know other agents that I know will take great care of you, then I would love to chat with you. Again, you can find my information in the description below. Please feel free to reach out. Phone call, email generally is the, the best way to get me. Um, that would be fantastic. And can you please do me a huge favor? If you could hit that like and subscribe button and maybe even possibly share this video with either a friend or family member who's thinking about making a move and might found, find this data that is ultimately the largest, most likely I should say, the largest uh, purchase that they're gonna make in their lifetime, then I would truly appreciate it. So until next week, 